In our very last video in AP Environmental Science, we are going to talk about human impacts on biodiversity. So to talk about biodiversity, we have to first talk about the lack of biodiversity, as we see with endangered species. And I'm sure we all know what endangered species are, and I can think of plenty of examples. What I want to focus on, though, is what makes a species prone to becoming endangered or possibly extinct. So a species can become endangered if they've been excessively hunted for whatever reason. Maybe there's a product the animal or creature uh, has that is valued by humans for some reason, whether it's for food or um, medicinal purposes or superstition or fashion, plenty of reasons. Um, a limited diet, so if they depend on a certain source of food and there's then something happens to that source of food, then they are then at risk because they need food to survive. If they're outcompeted by invasive species, or if they have specific habitat requirements. So as the habitats change because of climate change or you know humans developing that area, um, if they need a certain type of habitat and can adapt to the new changes or move someplace else, then they will be more at risk. They'll also be more at risk if within that habitat they already have a lot of competition. Um, so if you're shrinking this habitat space and making it harder to live there already, if there's also competition, it's going to be even more difficult to survive. Strategies that we can put in place to protect these animal populations include things like criminalizing poaching, protecting animal habitats, and introducing legislation such as CITES and the Endangered Species Act. CITES stands for the Convention on the International Trade of Endangered Species. It's an international agreement <clears throat> for countries to protect um, international or endangered species through their own individual legislation. So it's not a global law, but it is a global agreement to say that each of those countries that um, is in sites to protect endangered species on a national level. Um, so that nothing they do, um, no trade in which they participate in, will hurt endangered species. In the United States, we have the Endangered Species Act, and that is to protect endangered species and their habitat. So the and habitat is really important because even if a certain action is not going to directly kill or hurt that endangered species, if you're going to possibly harm that environment that they depend on, then you can't do whatever that thing is. So any mining operation, logging operation, housing development, whatever it is, if um, the Endangered Species Act is brought up against it, then they can't proceed with that, that action. So the Endangered Species Act has brought a lot of species back from near extinction. Um, one of them, uh, the bald eagle, when it was discovered that DDT was negatively impacting their population, um, you stopped producing DDT and they bounced back. It's pretty awesome. All right, HIPCO. HIPCO stands for the six ways in which biodiversity is lost um, in order of damage that it does. So there's habitat loss, invasive species, population, pollution, climate change, and overexploitation. Habitat destruction, habitat loss, habitat fragmentation, um, that is the number one cause of biodiversity loss because if you take away something's home, then where is it going to live? It's not. Um, even habitat fragmentation can be detrimental to that um, to that species because you take an you know wide range of habitat and broken them to a bunch of tinier sections um, that they can't necessarily pass through. So habitat fragmentation occurs when there's been construction of roads or pipelines, clearing for agriculture development, logging. Um, not all species will react the same. So if uh, there's a species that does really well on the edge, they might do better than any species that uh, is on the inside of that area, they do worse. So maybe there's a, you know, a specific type of light they depend on 
or they need a certain space like to hunt in. Um, a whole bunch of factors go into that. Um, but that is what we see with fragmentation is that the interior species decrease and the edge habitat and species increase. Invasive species are those species that are able to thrive outside of their normal habitat, which might be beneficial, uh, especially for them, but if they threaten native species, then they are then considered invasive. So if they eat up their food source, if they take away their nesting sites, um, then they are considered invasive. They're typically generalist and are selected species. So remember, generalist means they can live in a lot of different environments. Are selected means they're small and they have a lot of, um, they reproduce really quickly. So these factors make it even easier for them to outcompete native species for resources. With population, particularly our human population, um, as it increases, we increase our demand for resources, and so therefore our impact on the environment increases. And so we take up more space, we need more food, we need more st stuff, we put out more um, pollution, uh, so that might be air pollution, water pollution, thermal, noise, radioactive light, soil, um, visual pollution. There's a lot of different types of pollution. There's anything that we do that negatively impacts the health of an organism directly or indirectly. So maybe they don't um, breathe in whatever something it is, but if it affects their food source, affects the habitat they live in, it affects their um, their hunting in some way, maybe they can't see their prey, or just it, it, the list could go on and on and on. Um, but yeah, it's pollution, a lot of it, very bad. <sighs> Moving on to climate change. So climate change can cause habitat loss via changes in temperature, precipitation, sea level rise. Um, as the, um, the global temperature rises more and more, we see the percent of possible extinction increase as well. Again, because um, especially if they can't move to a new habitat for whatever reason, um, then that's even worse for them. Overexploitation can come from things like overharvesting, poaching, overfishing, um, even things like deforestation, cutting down a whole bunch of, of trees of a certain species. Um, if we harvest faster than can be replenished by nature, that's considered overexploitation. Um, and to some extent, domestication is kind of an overexploitation, mostly because we have selected for certain species, and so we've decreased the biodiversity of that organism, and they depend on on us. So, since we manage them for economic returns, like we've got this this relationship established, um, and it's harder for them to survive in the wild because we've, we've depleted the, the biodiversity of that species. So we can do things, you know, to decrease the impact. We can create protected areas. Um, we've already talked about legislation. We can use uh, habitat corridors. So that's building, for instance, like a land bridge over roads or, or whatever, so that instead of these areas being fragmented, now there's passage between them. And so now this whole area can be used. So for example, the Florida Panther, since they require huge areas um, for territory, this can decrease that negative impact that all the um, development down the south creates. Um, also just using land better, restoring lost habitats, all these things we can do to um, to increase those populations and decrease the negative impact we have on them. All right, well, that is the end. Um, I would like to first off thank you all, whether you're my student or you're someone else's student, or if you're a teacher, I've really appreciated all of your feedback. Um, and I really hope this has been a helpful resource. And good luck to all of you, especially in this time right now as we're dealing with COVID. Um, I hope you all are healthy and safe, um, and I just wish you the best of luck. And most of all, I also really hope that this course has been helpful. 
And the biggest thing I want you all to get out of it is that humans may suck and there may be a lot of problems, um, but we can do things about it. There are solutions. There is hope. Um, and you know, as cheesy it is, it starts with you. So good luck to all of you and thank you again.